uh, here we go. Now we're going to be installing another uh, mounting block on vinyl siding. Now this mounting block here uh, is going to be uh, accommodating my new Tesla charger. Now, as you guys who have vinyl siding on your house, you know, and you have the Tesla charger, you're going to have to mount this block here. All right. And let me take it over to the... I'm going to be mounting it. As you know from my other segment, I end up putting a electrical box, a water line. So right next to this, I'm going to be putting my Tesla charger. All right. Um, now, as you know, when you have that mounting block, when you put it against a vinyl siding, it's not a flush look at all. Not even close. There's a, you know, you can install it this way and then, you know, go around with cork and what have you to seal it off. But um, I didn't want to go that route. I wanted something a little more, um, a cleaner look. So, just like any other vinyl side end, they come with different options for your mountain blocks. This is for your electrical line. That's for the water line. So, I'm going to be using this block here for my Tesla line. Alright? So, um, to get that mounted... All right, you're gonna need some special tools. All right, one thing very importantly, you're gonna need this tool here. Um, this is a uh, siding remover tool that help you get underneath the siding to pry it apart, so you can mount all these things. So, um, look at my other videos. I showed you how to do it. Um, so, but I'm gonna attempt to do that now on my siding. All right, guys, just. Um all right, about to get started here now listen now for me to install my mountain block as you can see i pretty much got it i don't know if you can see this in the sun but i pretty much have it outlined in this location i'm gonna try to keep it uh aligned with the existing boxes so it has one good you know horizontal line um right here so that's how I'm attempt to do it. And uh, now what I'm gonna have to do to do that, I'm gonna have to separate first I'm gonna have to take this off. Alright. Uh this side because if you notice, and I, I guess I'll try to get this close better. There's a a seam right here. So I'm gonna have to move this block here so when I use my tool to pride, this is out of the way. Alright? And also I'm gonna have to do the again for the upper one right here. Another there's a seam here, so I'm gonna have to separate this one and this one just to install this location. All right, well, it does it gives me access to all the nails that's underneath here, so I can remove them. So, when I do cut in here, it's easy to pull it back and slip my um, mounted block underneath. All right, all right, guys, listen when you separate your, your siding, you just can use this tool. You're gonna get it on here. You'll see this little lip right here. That lip, when you put this under here, you're just gonna grab it at the edge and force it down. All right. And once you get it started, all you're gonna do is just gonna slide across to get it separated. And once it's separated, the rest is easy. It's just gonna come straight up. All right. And as you can see, this part here, this is the part where this lip is getting is under here. So you're gonna get it underneath here with that tube. And just pretty much grab this edge and pull it out from this edge here and that's going to separate your siding from your house all right so i just want to bring that to your attention a little detail for you guys who's going to be doing this for the first time the first time if it's new siding that's going to be kind of tough i recommend it do it when the weather's nice don't do it when it's cold because it comes more i believe more uh, rigid uh right now it's above 50 degrees here 55 so it's nice and warm, the sun's been hitting on it. So it's more easy to bend down due to the temperature. So that's my opinion. All right, so I'm gonna keep continue with the time lapse. And again, if any important points, I'll bring it to your attention. All right. Alright guys, now what we're going to continue on, alright, as you notice, I already got my box set up. Now what I did, I just simply took the the border of my box, took that off, and this is going to be my outline. So what you're going to do, you're going to find your location, 
you pretty much can just gonna rest it against here. Now I use the leveler um, and, and a ruler with a bubble level to make sure I was lined up per perfectly when I get my lines. And you just so you should take this, put it up here, get your rough at, um, rough location, come back with a, a bubbler, a bubbler, a leveler, and line it out so you have a nice square box here. And it's gonna be outlined. Now, what you're gonna do after you initially make your cut, you most likely have to expand that cut a little bit. But this just just get you a rough F opening of where you're gonna be. All right. So what I'm gonna do now, I have it separated from here and over there. I'm gonna make my cut first, so I know exactly where I'm at. Um, then once that cut is done, then I'll come. Once it's out, then I'll come and remove any nails. That's holding me up so I can take the other part and slide it underneath. Alright, so that's that's the idea on getting this this mountain block um, installed. Now when I make my cut, I'm gonna be using my um my air compressor with this type of uh, tool. There's a little plunge cut, it'll have a little uh, serrated edges, so it makes it much easier. You can use a roller roller zip, you can use a a um a box cutter, whatever you have, make that happen. All right, if you don't have this tool, there's other ways to get this same cut. I just happen to have this tools, as you know, boys and their toys, um, ideal, ideal for this situation. Um, but with this tool, with any other power tools, be careful in using it. Um, use hand protection, eye protection, you know, the basic common sense stuff, and just take your time when you make this cut. All right. Because um, it is a power tool, and it can get away from you if you're not paying attention. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to turn it on. I'm going to start with my plunge cut here. Come across, plunge cut, come down, up, that, and I'm, that'll get my opening for my mountain block. Alright guys, as you can see, um, I got a dry fit up here now, and this is how it's going to look. Um, what I want to bring to your attention also, when you do make this cut into your side end, make sure you don't make it too tight, alright? You got to leave some room for expansion, because the side end does expand and contract with the warm and cold climates. So, that's what I was doing during the time lapse, I was trying to just expand these little gaps, just widen it up a little bit. Uh, so when my my siding does expand, um, I won't get any buck, buckling. So and so doing that uh, will help that by cutting it out. Now again, and once it's done, I'm not really worrying about it because we guys also I just tell you also pick up you some um, some cork. Now you can get this. Uh, cork in the same shade or color of your siding depending um, mine happened to be color match 425 that's the closest to my color match um, and also depending how long your siding was on your house um, just in time it will fade so take that in account when you pick up this type of cork um, I'm not too sure if it's carried in like Lowe's and Home Depot I had to go to a special um, warehouse to pick this up that specialize in siding in this type of material so and um, again it's a little more money but again I I'm going for the final look so that's why I picked up the color matching cork It'll, it works just as fine for white if you want to put that up there but I didn't want any white on this because I, I don't want your eye to go to it pretty much all right um, so and that's how it is the brightest thing your eye goes to so that's why I got the the color match. I want to bring to your attention, and if you got siding, and the recent siding, you can have some type of foam backing on it. All right. Try not to cut too far into this, because this is your. It has a, some R value to it. All right. 
So, and also, what you should do, what I end up doing, I end up um, picking up some Tyvek tape, all right, or some type of barrier tape, moisture resistant tape, all right. This is Tyvex DuPont, all right, for you guys getting your house done. I suggest if you're going to go with any type of moisture barrier, go with uh, the Tyvex and DuPont, all right. Um, that's just my opinion. They're a little more expensive than the other uh, brands out there. Uh, take a look at my other video when I compare or when I had uh, the generic wrap on my house and we end up upgrading, not upgrading, getting the Tyvex that we were were um, supposed to put on there. Um, just my opinion. Um, you can do your research, uh, but go with the Tyvex. So again, pick up some of this tape and then what this tape is going to do is going to first you should put a layer over the part that you cut into because you might have some just just put uh, as a precaution all right as you know whenever I can do myself we can over layer it over protect it it's better for our house all right because you don't want any moisture to get behind this so that's for one thing and then when you put up your your block you're gonna want this tape once you screw in to go around that block again just an extra layer of protection so no mo moisture or water get behind behind this all right so that's all it is uh, if you're doing it yourself go to extra measure do this type of precaution because again you're saving money on the service right, by doing it yourself uh, if you hire somebody to do this they'll they'll tax you so take the extra money that you're saving buy some quality stuff and do it yourself all right properly all right I just want to give you another closer look when you put this the framing around here all right as you look I hope you guys can see this as, as you look in here this part right here I'm point my finger is you see there you want this to go when you push it in you want to go as far as back as possible not as possible but you but you want it to fit behind this, the the siding right here so you have to probably have to come back as you saw in the time as I was chipping that part so this little part will get in here um, you know you don't want this to sit on top of this you want to pretty much go behind it so when you put the cork on it'll come around here butt against that it just gives you a nice cleaner look um, at least that's how I'm doing it All right, right there and right there I don't know if you can see it All right right where this when it pumps out that's what I'm looking at okay so when it bumps out so if you come on this side as you come across here if you give me uh, the plane is going above you can see how, how it's resting on top I don't want it to rest on top so therefore I have to trim this right here a little closer just to get it rusting behind it so again, just a little detail to uh, show you, but overall it's coming out very good. Again, this is my location of my new Tesla charger for outside, and damn, nails up hit. <laughs> Thank you.
future, future location of my Tesla charger. This is how it's. I have to start with the the mounting plate it goes right to here. So that's so looking forward to getting that done. All right. So again, stay tuned for the next installment of this uh, video series. All right. Um, I will be mounting the plate for the Tesla charger right here. Do on the hole, getting everything uh, mounted on here. All right. So looking forward to getting it done. All right, guys. Again, subscribe to the channel, and you'll see that happen.